hurt my stomach too. It's funny. No, no point of order, Madam Speaker. My Speaker. No, on a point of order, Madam Speaker. On a point of order, Madam Speaker. On a point of order, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I believe that the Minister of Finance, in terms of. Shut your mouth and let me talk. I know you would have I know you would have a problem with I know you would have a problem with that. I know you would have a problem with that. A point of order, Madam Speaker. I have not no, made my point. I have not made my point of order, and I wanted to have a point of order, Madam Speaker. I have no, said what I needed to say. No, he, the, the, the member has used unparliamentary language no, in the front of the house. That indicates that the, the member making. should shut his mouth. Who is That's the minister of finance referring to as Massama? And so who well. is he referring to as Massama in the parliament? That's it. Who is he referring to as Massama? That is the not member. parliamentary language either. Madam, Madam Speaker. Madam, Ma Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, on a point of order, this Honorable House retains and must retain his status of being honorable. And one of the reasons that the standing order defines parliamentary language is to ensure that the honor of this house is never undermined. And members from time to time are required to use parliamentary language, especially in reference to other members of this honorable house. And to say to members that they should shut their mouth in the style and manner that this member did, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, is unparliamentary and unbecoming of that member. And I move, therefore, that the member withdraws that unparliamentary comment with regards to the member. Madam, Madam Speaker, to be, to be fair to the member from Southwest St. Andrew, she, she had risen on a point of order, and I think in fairness, she really ought to be heard, Madam Speaker. This house is that two wrongs. Please, please, please. Let me say that everybody who gets up to make a point of order and does so within the limits of the standing order, and I was just about to allow the member from St. Catherine Southwestern, but her behavior and her language, if you withdraw, hold a minute, if you withdraw that on parliamentary land, of course you would be allowed, and I'm not going to renege from that. Please withdraw those words because it, you know, for a couple, there are some unparliamentary language that has been used recently. And I'm saying to you now, unless you, oh, and, and, and it is unfortunate that even as we try, even as we try to have order, I have a right, hold a minute, minister, I have a right to speak. I have a right to speak. Go ahead. Madam Speaker, the inconsistency in the house. Please allow me to hear what her point of order is. The member's point of order. That's the point of order I was raising, Madam Speaker, is a fact. Have you withdrawn the behavior? If you do not withdraw... Madam Speaker, I am trying to follow your instructions. Yes, but, but I am not... going back and forth. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I rose and started there, and then you asked me what was the point of order. Madam Speaker, the inconsistency in the house is glaring, but I will say this. No, Madam Speaker, you have asked me if to I'm going to withdraw your words allow and me then to, you allow can me to do it. If I'm to withdraw it, I'm not going to do it on your terms. You don't have the right, no, I'm not. No, I am not going to do it on your terms. 
I am willing to withdraw it, but not on your terms. Not while you try to shut me up. The members over there say shut him out every day, and you have nothing to say about it. Unfortunately. Nothing. And that is inconsistency to which I agree. Unfortunately, the standing orders. I am willing. I am willing to withdraw that. I am um, willing to withdraw I, I, saying I, I, You know, madam. I am willing to withdraw from... saying it, but you cannot. You cannot beat me over the head. You cannot beat me into submission by in, in, in the, how it is done. I no. am. Hold a minute. I am not beating anybody's head in here. I am following the standing orders, and in these standing orders, the speaker's ruling is correct. And you stand by it. Let us. Your behavior is on parliamentary. Your behavior is on parliamentary. Go right ahead. On a, uh, Madam Speaker, on a point of order. I was. I just on a ruled. Point, I'm, I'm not, Madam Speaker. I just ruled that the minister will continue his. What is your point of order? My point. On a point of order, Madam Speaker. I'm not sure how my absence from the house. No, I'm the, not finished no, what no, I'm no. saying. I'm does not my finished. absence from the I house. I have not finished my sentence. But you call it it. I, I am completing to say that during these debates, there have been a lot of unparliamentary behavior that has taken place. And the member rose for a point of order. I allowed her to stand and her behavior was Totally. Madam oh, Speaker, I was not I was not relating to the members' behavior. That was not what my point of order was about. And certainly one of the things that I would like clarified, and it doesn't have to be here, but I think what has happened has created a degree of tension at this point. And I'm asking you if we could be advised what is unparliamentary language according to the standing orders. The reason why the reason why I am asking, Madam Speaker, is because from time to time, both sides, both sides hurl different words, and from time to time, reactions are given. Perhaps, and I knew there was a women's caucus, and some of these things were discussed. And if we really are trying to build any kind of consensus across the aisles, there has to be some degree or appear to be fairness. All I'm asking is moving forward, what is considered unparliamentary? Because I've heard that word shouted from both sides all the time. All the time. Yes, but, but um, member, when you get up to make a point of order, you don't stand on your feet in making that point of order, and that is my ruling, and shout when you are on your feet to make your point of order and say what you say, shut up your mouth like that. I am saying to you, you have asked permission in the middle of a presentation for a point of order to be made. The opportunity has been given to you. And this is the way it is done. And I think it is most unparliamentary. So therefore, that is my rule. So may we ask no, no, the member... Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker. Um, that's, that's I really would like the member to I, continue. I know, I know Madam Speaker, but, but just to... Madam Speaker... Madam Speaker, the, the member did rise on the issue of the characterization of the leader of the opposition as, as, as Master Mark. And I think in that is the unparliamentary language reference that the member from Southwest, St. Andrew, was in fact referring to. And, and the, the member from Southwest, the member from Southwest St. Catherine is, a, is the least but, but, capable Madam, um, of, 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 of making these clarifications. But, um, member, um, Madam Speaker, opposition. Let, may I just speak? No, but I'm saying the sort of voucher comment from, from the member, what, what's that? which was that he's a descendant of a slave master. That's what was said over there. I am not Madam I Speaker, not but that is a point that I'm making. That comment. But that is a point that I'm making, Madam Speaker. Member, I am saying to you, as I said, members, 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 please allow me. I can't, I can't speak while you're speaking. 
I'm saying to you, I cannot rule on a comment that I did not hear. The member asked, raised, stood on a point of order. And I allowed her, I expected her, I said, what is your point of order? And I'm waiting and then I heard her outburst that I cannot rule on something that I did not hear. If I hear a comment, I most certainly am not afraid to rule on either side of the aisle. I did not hear the comment. I was waiting for her. I was waiting for the member to raise a point of order when that outburst came from her. And I consider that that outburst, when she stood on her feet, was unparliamentary. I did not hear the comment that you have now referred to. Yes. I did. Yes. 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 I never did. So I can empathize with that. All I'm saying is that where we are now, there is clearly some work on attention that is amiss. And is we want to be able to work together across the aisle and i'm saying to you i'm saying to you in the best interest in the best interest of this country i cannot have a colleague who sits in this parliament all of us are colleagues in here who leaves this way and i'm asking you as a speaker i don't we have to find a way to have better relationships and i'm hoping that it can be rectified, even though she has left a member. That cannot be good. Can I say something? I have ruled in a matter where I allowed the member, please allow me, to get up and make a point of order. You have raised something that I did not hear. I cannot, I will not. I said it last week, and I maintain, I cannot rule on something that I did not hear. And for the, re for the records, I have an excellent re a relationship with s most members on your side of the aisle. I have a good relationship with a member from Southwest, but it does not stop me from ruling on what I heard and saw. And then when I spoke to her, there was a big argument and she declared openly that she will not um, I can't, I don't want to quote her, but she will not withdraw on my thing. And I don't want to prolong this. Because to every, I, no, um, member, I am allowing the minister. I am not going to have any more distractions. I am, I am going to allow the minister to complete his debate. Do you notice that your leader of opposition business is still sitting in the house? When you walk out, it doesn't allow for any sort of reconciliation and I have I have no animosity on the other side so I'm going to ask now that the Minister of Finance completes his presentation. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.